Hello, my name is Rod Moppin, and I'm going to show you how I use Gridpoint Atlas in conjunction with Google Earth. When I want to overlay the grid at a certain part of the world, I first go to Google Earth, and I find the area that I'm interested in. In this case, we're going to plot the grid over the Argonne National Laboratory. This is a particle accelerator facility that's in state of Illinois in the United States. So in particular what I want to do is I want to see how the grid relates to where they have placed this accelerator ring. I have placed a marker in Google Earth at the center of the ring and I'm going to right click on the marker, select properties, and here's the coordinate at the center of the ring. This is where I want to center the plot of the grid. So I have written this coordinate down. Now that I know my coordinate I want to center on, I'll go to Gridpoint Atlas, and I need to create a map. I'll go up here to Theme Selection. I have five maps to choose from. I'll choose the North American map that includes the United States. And I just want to apply a base layer, because all we need is a reference point for where we're going to plot. So I'm going to select one layer, Political Boundary Areas. You can select these other areas, but they're quite a bit out of date. You really only need to plot a base layer, so I'll select this, click Add. It becomes one of the selected themes, and now I'm going to say Update. Now it's plotted the base layer. I'm going to come up here to the toolbar and click on the Draw Marker at Coordinate button. And in here, I'm going to enter the coordinate of the center of the accelerator ring at the laboratory. That's why I wrote this down earlier. This is where the center of the accelerator ring but we do not want to plot the grid over this large of area because there'll be jillions of points and it will just bog down the computer. So what I'm going to do is come up to the toolbar and I want to click on the zoom function. I'll zoom in. Now we're getting closer to the area. I'm going to come up here and center the map at the cursor. I'll click the button. I'll click in the center of the marker, and that places the marker at the center of the view. Now this is still a too large of an area for me to plot. I, yes, I could plot it. Uh, you could potentially plot the grid over the entire world, but you'll have trillions of points and you're just going to bog down your computer, so why do it? I always zoom in to the smallest area that I can that will cover what I want to plot, but still not be big enough where it includes a huge area that I'm not interested in. So for a first plot, this is probably pretty good. Next, I'll come in here and I'll select the Overlay World Grid button. And what I want to do is I can enter a coordinate that I want the plot to be centered on, or I can use the last marker placed. Well, that's why I placed a marker, because I want it to center the plot on the last marker placed. So I've selected that. I'm going to plot a 7.5 minute grid, or 7.5 nautical miles. I'll change the grid color to ultraviolet blue. Now this is too big of an area. I'm going to zoom in just where I get mainly four squares. I'm going to have to plot, I won't be able to just plot this sort of an area because I've centered the plot on this coordinate, so I'll have to make it about this big. If you've plotted a grid already and you hit the Overlay World Grid button again, it's going to ask you if you want to overlay another grid, if you want to create a new area, or if you want to do nothing. If I click Do Nothing, it just comes out, nothing happens. We want to create a new area. We want to get rid of the grid that we have and create a new one, but this time it'll be smaller. So all the parameters are the same. I'll just click OK. 
Now we have a small grid plotted over the area that we want. Before we can look at this in Google Earth, we need to save it. So I'll do save as, and I've already saved this file before. And I'm gonna save it under the name Argonne National Lab, Illinois, USA, save. And since the file already exists on my machine, I'll overwrite it. Now I'm ready to go to Google Earth. So what we do is click on the View in Google Earth button on the toolbar. Notice that if you forget which button to click, the button on the toolbar looks the same as the Google Earth icon on your desktop or in your program group. I did that purposely. So let's go back to Gridpoint Atlas. I'll click View in Google Earth. It'll bring up Google Earth and it will plot the grid in the area I've specified. In this case, we see that this major grid line goes practically through the exact center of the accelerator ring. So I've already placed a marker in Google Earth. Now I want to make sure that this plot that I have done is saved off. So I'm going to drag this up into the My Places folder. And it'll go about right there. And then up here I have a marker already saved in Google Earth. Now notice that when I zoom out, You can see as I've zoomed out that the grid only encompasses this area. That's what I want. Because when you look at all these other plots I've done, if you do, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400 plots and you save them off in Google Earth, if you do the smallest area possible, then it's only going to use the minimum amount of CPU power and memory on your computer that you need to use. And that's why I do it that way. So as we can see, this facility just happens to be placed on a major grid line. And in particular, the accelerator ring was placed where it's sitting on a major grid line. Now, is this a coincidence or, you know, was this done on purpose? Well, I'll let you decide. I can tell you that we have looked at all of the particle accelerator facilities around the world. And in all of the major facilities, they all sit on major grid lines. Some sit on minor grid lines, but all the major facilities do. So they obviously know about the grid, and they obviously use it to their advantage. And that's a demonstration of how I use Gridpoint Atlas in conjunction with Google Earth.